There's only a PDP and APC called Defend Manifesto. They're not a fight for the battle. Trust me now, see the way obedient that does them. Our manifesto is very easy to explain to the public. Please, my beloved family, please do me a favor. Just the hit this like button and share this video. Don't be afraid to let people know that you are obedient. First up to Team Atiku. Your candidate has been trying to sell to us a theme, Recover Nigeria, I believe. What does that mean and why should that resonate with Nigerians? Good morning, ev good afternoon everybody. My name is Ilema Naonoja. I have the privilege of leading a team of bright young minds from the People's Democratic Party to this event today. The Recover Nigeria message of the PDP presidential candidate Alaji Atiku Abakar simply just juxtaposes where we were in the past, where we are, and what must be the path for our future. A few short years ago, this land of Obafemi Awolowo and um, Dr. Nan Diazikiwe and Sir Amadou Bello housed the hope of not just the African continent, but the entire black nation. This land was, we had once at the time, fastest growing economy in Africa, not just in Africa, but in the whole world. We had before us a people that were fixed on a path to sustainable growth and development. We made an error in 2015 when we elected the APC and President Mohamed Buhari. Four years ago, I was at a similar program like this with a similar team of people where we warned about the imperatives of ensuring that we did not reward failure with re-election. Unfortunately, it is with a deep sense of sadness that I stand before you to say that all our fears from four years ago have been justified. We have suffered the unintended consequences of record unemployment, record lack of security, record insecurity, record lack of access to health care, record lack of a record disunity, and all the economic and social indicators via which development um, is measured are in the negative. We will stand here now and on behalf of an APC candidate that has refused to present to he, himself to the Nigerian public in intellectual spaces where we can speak and question the, his ideas and his pop, policy proposition. A few people are going to try to speak and make representations on behalf of. That representations must be met with scorn and derision. When they speak about education, we'll have to ask them, how dare you speak to us about education? When you've made us the on education capital of the world with 22 million people out of school. When they speak about um, wealth creation, we have to ask them, how dare you speak about wealth creation when you have led 133 million of our compatriots into living in multi-dimensional poverty? When they speak about the economy, we have to ask them, how dare you speak about the economy? When you have led us between 2015 and now, you have led us through two recessions that have resulted in the loss of millions of jobs and the livelihoods and well-being of millions of our compatriots. On the other hand, what we will do after we finish asking them that question, how dare you come to campaign to us instead of apologizing, we will now speak about the Recover Nigeria agenda of the People's Democratic Party that speaks about economic growth, economic regeneration, that speaks about the hope for the future, that speaks about the establishment of whole sectors of the Nigerian economy, that speaks about the and development and the reinvigoration of previously run down institutions of government. We know one thing, one thing is clear, that in 2015, the People's Democratic Party handed over to the APC a much better country than it inherited from the military. That country has been taken, has been run down, has been broken down, has been bastardized. Our simple message is that we intend to provide the sort of leadership that recovers that country and replaces her firmly on the path to su sustainable growth and development. Thank you very you. much. We'll move on now to Team Obi. Um, Make Nigeria Great, I believe, is a theme and a manifesto. Tell us what that is and why we should bother. Um, thank you very much, Ibuka, for inviting us uh, to this town hall, which is different from, uh, well, you know the rest. <laughs> well, the desire of every upstanding citizen of Nigeria is to have a country that works for everyone and not just a select few. We want to have a country where students are not kept out of school for eight months, where you and I don't have to queue for 10 hours just to buy five liters of fuel, where you and I can travel safe, safely from Lagos to Abuja, from Enugu to Port Harcourt without fear of being kidnapped, 
or murdered. That is the desire of every country, of every citizen. That is the Nigeria that we all want, and that is the promise that the Labour Party is making via the candidacy of His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Dati Ahmed. For too long, we have handed this country over to criminals. They have looted and plundered and pillaged, and they have ravished our commonwealth. Now they tell us they want to recover us. They come to tell us that they want to renew our hope. Well, we have to ask, what happened to the hope that was there before? See, it is time we hand this country over to a competent team, a team that has built wealth and managed enterprise. Peter Obi and Dati represent a new breed of leadership. They have done it before in different capacities, and given the opportunity, they will do it again. They have the track record to, to ban additional cash transfer. We will not agree with you that the APC government have not improved their life. Or the student of Fupre in Delta, ATBU, uh, Funai Eboyi, BUK in Kano, who are benefiting from the energizing education program, whose universities have been powered by our energy energizing education program, we will not agree with you that APC is useless. Or the people who have benefited from the national mass metering program, the solar, solar power Niger program, and also people who are going to benefit from our cement power plant, which your candidate wants to now steal the credit by saying it will complete if he get selected would not agree with you that the APC has not been useful. And for my right honorable friend who is here, let me speak to you. Second Niger Bridge, 16 years of your government did nothing to that, more than laying foundation on foundation. But we have made that a reality. Thank you. So now let me, let, let's uh, come back to you. Um, very quickly, there's a lot of talk about his games as vice president. But there's also the conversation around the fact that as vice president, did he really have the powers to do anything? One of his biggest criticisms is the fact that he may not have been able to, he may not have ever held executive position. Does that matter? And if it does, what is his track record specifically? Um, anybody who says that a vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria who has constitutional roles and then who has roles that are stipulated by law in several agencies across several sectors in the Nigerian economy simply does not know what they're talking about. And to further buttress that point, yeah, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for instance, is the Chairman of the National Economic Council. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for instance, is the Chairman of the Nigerian uh, Emergency Management Authority. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for instance, is the DG, is the Chairman of the Debt Management Office, and so on and so forth. So there's quite a lot of role there. One. Two. The idea that Alaji Atikwabaka did not implement or did not exercise any sort of executive power has been repudiated by his principal, his boss in office, former president Olusegun Obasanjo, who speaking at several fora has time and again said he had occasion to trust Alaji Atikwabaka with the reins of power and that Alaji Atikwabaka as, as vice president at the time delivered on all the mandates and all the um, assignments that had been given to him. So it's very clear and it's quick. I mean, that's a non-issue. Thank you very much. Now, your candidates, I think one of the biggest criticisms we all see is the fact that he doesn't seem to give us the hows a lot. You know, we hear the promises, but we don't know how it's going to be achieved. Um, why is that? Is that a strategy? I mean, there was a point where he said, I have a strategy on security, but I don't want it to be stolen by other people. How do you inspire confidence like that? Um, so one thing that has become a mantra for His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi is the phrase, go and verify. He does not make promises. He does not tell you things that he has not done before. In terms of insecurity, when he came into power in Anambra State, the PDP had run that state down. They didn't have a government house. They didn't have anything. The whole state was in chaos. He came in and secured that state and moved them up to the point that the uh, IGP at the time named Anambra one of the safest states at the time. In terms of education, we saw what he did in education, moving Anambra from number 24 to number 1. In terms of implementing the SDGs, he was able to make Anambra State the top state implementing the SDGs as uh, recognized by the UNDP. So when he tells you that he will do these things, he has the capacity, he has the bright minds around him, he is someone who has done it in the private sector, he is someone who has done it in the public service, and be assured that when he gets in there, he will repeat what he has done before. He has the capacity. Thank you very much. Now to you, one of the biggest issues a lot of Nigerians have today is that is the trust deficit between Nigerians and the government is almost at zero, pretty much. It's very hard for Nigerians to understand why your candidate doesn't seem to want to speak to Nigerians, which he has raised. He did say once that he didn't want to be used by the media because he knows he wanted to be used for ratings. 
There's also a lot of talk about his affiliation with certain media houses. Why is that a problem? Coming from eight years, whether we like it or not, of having a president, that didn't necessarily have conversations with us. People are worried. Is this going to continue? If you don't trust the Nigerian media, how should we trust you? Thank you very much. And you would agree with me that my candidate is one of the most outspoken person on this campaign. He has visited more states and more communities than any of the other candidates represented on this platform. My candidate has only chosen to uh, be selective about the platform that he speaks. For example, my candidate was not shy to go to Chatham House to read his presentation and also give members of the team opportunity to express the vision that he has that Sorry, shows Nigerian, his capacity. Nigerian media. Yes, I'm coming. Uh, my can if, you're, if you're on social media, you would have seen the video trending over the last few days of my candidate at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group discussing about debt management and generating revenue. In that particular interview, in case you forgot, they asked your candidate if he was going to find alternative means of income for Nigeria apart from debt and he said, oh, he would keep borrowing and borrowing to Nigeria. But in that interview, my candidate expressed his plan for Nigeria to look at foreign direct investment to get him funding, to also scale down on uh, subsidies and also to bring in partnership. And he said to them, I have done it before. I've done it in Lagos. And you can come to Lagos and see what we have done in this Lekki Expressway that you've seen here, two public-private partnerships, to the Lekki Koji Link Bridge, two public partnerships, the Lekki Deep Sea Port, the Lekki Airport that is coming up, and also infrastructure across the other parts of Lagos. And he's saying to you, I'm not saying go and verify. You experience this around you every day. You see it in our life ferry. You see it in our blue light rail services. You see it in our Greek lands in Badagri and in a that have been explored. The trainings that Lagos State Government is doing to young farmers every day. Our multimodal transport system, our tech innovation, and in our public primary school, let me wrap up with that. In every primary primary school in Lagos today, we have a program called Eco Excel. Our young people in our schools have been taught with a term, a dig digitalization of our teaching and learning in public primary school in Lagos State. No, as one of our Quara State came to Lagos to understudy what is called Quara Learn today. Much. This was a question on talking to Nigerians, not necessarily to list what's been done. You raise your hand first, we'll come to you. Uh, yes, so um, my brother, Dayo Israel, keeps bragging about uh, Lagos, which, um, not according to me, but according to uh, uh, global figures, Lagos is the second worst city to live in the world. So, I mean, what's, what exactly are we bragging about here? You talk about the blue line and this, you talk about, hold on, you talk about the blue line and this and that, we want you to talk about your candidate did and not to brag or boast about the investment and what other people who have succeeded him have done. What did Bola Ahmed Tirubu do while he was the governor of Lagos State? In terms of education, Anambra State, go on social media, people who benefited from 30,000 for primary school students. He had the phone numbers of all the secondary school prefects. He was in touch with them. He was very, very heavily invested in education. I will give you a number from number 24 to number one in educational performance. That is what you brag with, not the achievements of others. Thank you very much. We'll come to you. He also had a question. Dion Israel speaks and talks about the Lagos that Tinubu built. Can we address that? Yeah. On the average, the average Lagosian spends four hours in traffic every day. On the average. Lagos is a place that, once it drizzles, it floods. Lagos is a place with failing infrastructure. The Lekki Ekpe Expressway, which is cited as an example, typically people's people, has people who spend several hours in traffic on a daily basis, occasioned by large potholes and craters in the middle of the road. It has a failing healthcare system. It has a failing primary school system, where a primary and secondary school system, where a lot of students simply do not have access to the infrastructure that they require. So when he speaks about Lagos, Lagos has a thuggery problem where we have an entire underworld cartel that creams 200 million naira daily off the sweat of Lagosians in Lagos. Lagos's businesses are taxed multiply and are groaning under the consequences. Let us actually address the Lagos that, um, that Tinubu built. The Lagos that Tinubu built was built from the Lekki Corridor all the way to Ekpe. Everything else he inherited. Everything else he inherited. Let us look at the Lekki Ekpe Corridor. It's a glorified slum with a lack of all the amenities that everybody in a mega city that they like to style Lagos as should take for granted. It simply does not exist. And we should be warning everybody that anybody who says that they want to export the Lagos that we see and we experience on a daily basis to the national level is threatening the lives, welfare and well-being of the average Nigerian from Potako to Meduguri, from Kogi to Kwara and every other part of the country. What Lagos did Tinubu build? Can I respond? Thank you very much. 
you know, I like your presentation, but people from your state who flood Lagos every day at the backs of trucks and trailers and night buses would not agree with you. They are not staying in their own state, they're coming into Lagos, and that is why we have thousands of people putting pressure on our social investment program and on our public amenities and facilities. And that Lagos was the Lagos that Ashwaju Bola met in Ubu, who started the program to pay the exceed of every people in our schools in Lagos. Either they were negotiations of people that came from your state and your state. Ashwaju Bola met in Ubu is not a tribalistic individual and has continued to inspire the governors that has accommodated people within the state. So that's the reason why you see that our infrastructure, but we are not staying on that. We continue to expand the infrastructure. Yes, there have been traffic, but we have done a lot of investment in our own infrastructure we have introduced the small my small uh, last my buses we have introduced the large buses and the you know and the uh, brt lanes in lagos state for example we have expanded 500,000 people go through our large ferries every day and in addition to that we are doing the coastal road and the regional roads across the lake to create alternative route to get to the international airport we are every day investing everything that we have into making lagos better and that's why every day millions of your people and your people are entering into our lagos it is insulting of you to come on this platform and speak against the progressive families that have continued to build and make lagos a safer place for people to come into a tree to jump out the bigger tree jumped right out immediately the bigotry jumped right out. We do not live in Lagos for free. We pay taxes. I probably pay, I probably pay more taxes, and I'm not even from Anambra. I probably pay more taxes to the Lagos state government than you ever have. I probably pay more taxes. And my, and my payment of taxes and my creation of employment and the taxes from the people I employ earn people the right to live in Lagos and to demand better. Nobody insulted Lagos. Nobody are insulted. Very quickly now, okay. We need to take one minute statement from three of you before we move on to the other segments, and then you come back at the end of it to wrap up the entire debate. So in the order that we started. What we're asking people to do is look forward to a future that is bright and it captures the rest, all of us. That captures all of us. There's a person who has a track record of participating of all the three candidates represented here. Only one candidate, Alaji Atiku Abbaka, has a track record of participating in wealth creation, in institutional reform, in legislative growth and development at the highest levels in our country. His name is Alaji Atiku Abbaka. And there's only, one candidate on the, um, there's only one candidate here that all the other two candidates have campaigned for. In 2007, I'm um, speaking in an interview, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu said that Alaji Atiku Abaka is the best person to lead Nigeria in that era. In 2019, Mr. Peter Obi said that Alaji Atiku Abaka is the best, most prepared, most experienced candidate to lead Nigeria in a post-Buhari era. If we receive glowing endorsements from rivals, it makes it easy to reach the inescapable, irrefutable conclusion that in a post-Buhari era, there is only one candidate that is best experienced and best equipped to lead Nigeria. Thank you. Our party is promising Nigerians that together we will take back our country from the people who have plunged us into abject poverty. The PDAPC in the last 23 to 24 years have turned Nigeria upside down. They have stolen our commonwealth through SPVs. They have stolen our commonwealth through collecting multiple taxations and uh, conglomerates that enrich themselves. My candidate is and will continue to say that if any pin from Anambra State entered his pocket, he will stop campaigning. Can the two candidates of those, these other two parties make such similar boasts? This is someone who has managed a, a state that was in debt, paid off the debt, and even left savings. This is someone who has excelled in private sector and excelled in the public sector, and given the opportunity, he will do it again. Thank you very much. Moses said in the scripture, I put before you life and death, choose one. Today, I echo the words of the prophet to say that before you in this election is a man who has shown capacity, who has been able to implement some of the ideas that we want to see on the national scale and piloted them in Lagos. Road, road transformation, transport uh, revolution, and also creation of job driving tech and creating an environment for creatives to be able to grow and young entrepreneurs to be able to find hope. And he wants to come here and renew that hope and scale up on those ideas that he has been able to implement in Lagos State. He's not coming to say, uh, I want to do this. He's saying, I have done this and I'm ready to scale up that. And then leaving us with two things. He says, I'm going to work for you and I'm going to work with you. Ashiva Jubala Ahmed Tinubu has promised that he's going to give young people a seat at the table. And you can tell from what he has done in Lagos. When he was governor of Lagos, today's governor, Jawajide Somolu, was 36 years old. Please. Thank you very much to our three speakers. Just before we go, 
uh, on a quick break, just two facts just wanted to clear up. First of all, you say that uh, Peter will be turned down oil wells. We still don't have that verified, that information. We don't know whether that source is confirmed. Secondly, you did mention that President Buhari lifted 10 million Nigerians out of poverty. But the facts say the opposite, that over 10 million Nigerians have gone into poverty. So just wanted to clear that up. So we did have a conversation with some of your favorite celebrities around the country on who they are voting for and why we should support their candidates. And here's what they had to say. My name is Rino Oduala. And on the question of who I support to be Nigeria's next president, as a young person, I'll be voting on issues that matter most to me, especially social issues, education, jobs, innovation, quality healthcare, human rights, women rights, ability to understand global trends, security, amongst many others. So I'll be voting for someone who has proven himself more than capable to address these issues. A present president, an honest president, an empathetic president, a problem solver, a communicator, someone with the right skills, attitudes, character, and mindset to address these issues. That person that represents a bright future, not just for this generation, the older generation, and the future generation. Someone that represents represent a possible Nigeria, that represents the Nigeria of our dreams, someone who will unite us as a nation. And that person is the person with competence, character, capacity, attitudes, skills, and commitment to address our issues as a nation. That ticket that represents inclusivity, equity, justice, not just for some Nigerians, for all Nigerians, for women, for young people, from people from different tribes, different religions, different lands. And that person is His Excellency. Peter will be.